This dynamic duo is the authority on taking the overwhelm out of leading a healthy lifestyle. Champion you to build a foundation for health, happiness, and success. They are leading a revolution on physical, nutritional, and emotional empowerment, helping you find a balance between work, family, and self. They strive to maximize your personal success, overcome your challenges, transform your body, increase your energy, attain your goals, and focus on overall wellness so you can feel consistently better about yourself and can perform better in all aspects of your life. Let's take the overwhelm out and achieve balance through physical, nutritional, and emotional awareness. Introducing renowned health strategists, life trainers, global speakers, authors, coaches, entrepreneurs, motivators, the one and only pal and Jenny D. Right, we're getting the guys on this afternoon, or oh, daft o'clock in the morning there, time as it is over in uh, Pennsylvania this morning. I think they're there. I don't know where, they're, where, they're, where they are in America today. Good morning, David. Good morning, sir. How are you? Oh, we are doing awesome. You How look, are you doing over there? Oh, fantastic. Just normal. Well, I don't know why you bother asking that, because you know I'm perfect every day. <clears throat> Well, I know. When I heard you were in your leotard this morning, just rocking it out over there, I love it. Yeah, back yeah. cold my legs this morning. Flipping, it's cold. I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I was just envisioning that as I was, you know, downstairs exercising, and I just well, yeah. I couldn't stop smiling and laughing because I'm really? just envisioning you over there in the studio with your uh, leotard on. Well, most women just have trapped wind. That's why they smile at me. But that's another story. Anyway, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so have you had a good week oh uh, fantastic week fantastic What's I mean, been you, it, it, it's, it really is it's been amazing and the, the 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 snow is dissipated so we can actually see grass and it feels good and i just can't wait till it warms up so that means you've seen the kids again they've walked back up that hill in your garden and they've managed to make it back to the house in one piece have they <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yes, oh, yeah. they've returned from the bottom of no man's land at the bottom of our hill. So bless the socks. Bless the socks. Uh, so it, uh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so who's our guest today? Good morning, Helen. Good morning, Helen. Good morning. Oh, how are we? Morning, Helen. Well, actually, yeah. It's actually not morning for you, is it? I, we always say good morning because it's morning in our world, but I know it's afternoon yeah. for you guys. Not just yet. We're still in. We still. We still are in AM, but. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It, it, we it, had feels, that it feels like half a day has gone already. Oh, it that has time really, change. <laughs> that time change just kind of screwed us all up. I mean, you know, we've got to just eliminate this time change thing throughout the entire world because, I mean, that, <laughs> that really messed things up. It was like, you know, Jenny, she's there like, wait a minute. If we change, does that mean, does everybody else change? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we started going through all this stuff. Oh. Well, I'm telling you, I've I've got to 50 years of age, and I still don't know when it, if it's forward or backward. When it when the first time that we have to do the clock change, and I'm like, I haven't got a clue, me. The amount of times I've turned up late for different events where someone said you're an hour late, am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so it's so funny, David, because I I always used to get confused myself, and then somebody one time in my life somebody said to me that you spring forward and you fall backwards. Ah, there you go. I remember that one. I always remember it now. Yep. So now all of us are going to remember that forever. Let me write yeah. that down. So spring yep. forward, spring forward, and, and fall back. And autumn mm -hmm. backward because it's it fall. Back in the UK, people go, "What's on about fall?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, hey, uh, so Helen, so uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, I will I will tell you that I remember the first time that I ever connected with you and we were going to mega success in L.A. last year. And I saw that on Facebook that you were actually getting prepared where you were getting all your protein bars and all your food and everything all ready to go and shipped to LA 
to make sure that you were being taken care of because I mean, I'm Did sure she? if you looked at any of the Disney names, <laughs> you know that they do not have anything healthy over there. I will tell you that much. And I and I and I, and I was there like, wow, that is amazing. Somebody has actually got it. And uh, and then I said, you know, we were going to get mega energy going. And I said, you're going to be coming. And you're there like, yes. And then that's and that's where, you know, kind of we had met. And uh, so that was that, that was the first story. I wanted to share that. I mean, and I just I just remember that it just you just amazed me of how, you know, in tune you were. We're like somebody out there is just like us. We've got a meter. Yeah. <laughs> really was. Yeah, yeah it, it it was important. It was to keep me it was to keep me going um, through the you know the long days, and I always need some form of protein or nutrition in my handbag, um, just at the ready, so that you don't obviously go for any unhealthy snacks or anything like that. So that that was the idea there. Um, got, obviously, um, David got, David probably <laughs> thinks I'm a bit of a diva having it all shipped over. <laughs> oh no no no! Have you got golf clubs in that handbag as well? Because because normally. <laughs> It's the only thing I haven't found in a women's handbag yet is golf clubs. <laughs> See, David always thought we were crazy, but now that he's following one of our nutrition plans, he understands how important it is to always have stuff at the ready to eat. Yeah. So I have a, I have a small ch small Chinese child dragging a bag along behind me. <laughs> Whatever I go. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> No. So Helen, so uh, so you know, tell us. So let's start off. There's there's a lot of things going on. Uh, I mean, I know you've got a new book out. I know you did a half marathon. But before we get into all that, can you tell us about HEW? Uh, okay, what that stands for, and really, it's like you know who you know who do you work with? Tell tell us a little bit about that and and your journey. Because I know that, you know, you also were in corporate just like us, and then you became an entrepreneur. So tell us a little bit about, uh, about what you're doing and what that stands for. Of course, yeah, I'd love to. Um, so HEW is actually me. They are my initials, um, but it is um, my business as well. So it stands for Helping Entrepreneurs Win. Um, and with that, I work with um, individuals and business owners um, who are already on their entrepreneurial journey. Um, they may have come and, and reached a sticking point or facing some obstacles, or it may be people that are new into their journey and maybe need a little bit of help with their transition period. Um, and generally, anyone who feels that they need that next level push and accountability. Um, and that's all been born through my own experience as well when you touched on the book there. Um, yeah. Everything that I do and everything that I work with is purely from my own experience, from the thoughts that I had when being in corporate and wanting to reach out and how do I get out of this and be my own boss and how did I manage that like transition period um, and, you know, how have I then come from over two years ago coming out of a successful corporate career in London to then um, being my own boss and, you know, working with people and having fantastic opportunities like this, you know, through technology, having interviews online um, with with yourselves, you know, it's all yeah, well, part what, of... Um, and Helen, what happened? I mean, whenever I come going from corporate, so what made you, I mean, what was that jump? What was that, uh, what was that uh, uh, emotional piece that you said, hey, listen, I need to, I need to just do this on my own? I just, I just have never been great at being restricted by other people's rules and regulations, if I'm totally honest. Mm, yeah, uh, I, I love that, yeah. <laughs> I like to um, I like to do things off my own back. I like to bring my own energy. I like to bring my own creativity, my own ideas. And I'm not really, I don't thrive really in environments where you're restricted by mm -hmm. other people's um, opinions and politics and, you know, things like that that are really, really tying. I think people people can be more free and express themselves more freely, you know, if they're going on off their own back and and right. And it's like going, you, going with their own you passion. Scared. You weren't you weren't scared. You know, it's, I'm sure we're all scared <laughs> yeah. a little bit. But I mean, there was uh, there was that point. I'm even even remember for us. I was that you know you know 
it was about you know making that leap, and so you needed to do that. And what was uh, what was that? What was that one last piece that that made you make that jump? Uh, I, I was scared, by the way. Um, you know, it was it was a case of there wasn't there wasn't any period where the were some fear that I had to overcome. And and on top of that was the fact that I was giving up a healthy salary to then go yeah. and go and, and go from to rock bottom. So that is enough fear in itself to think, oh my goodness, like am I really doing the right thing? To then mm-hmm. start from, you know, growing and, and developing that money um pop back up. You know, that's that's quite significant. And a lot of people are fearful of that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, in, in terms of what was the last piece for me, it was just a case of enough is enough. You know, um, I'd thought about it for so long. And what's the point in just dragging that thought process out, out any longer? I yeah. found what I wanted to do. I'd got the support from my partner. Right. Um, and, you know, we was, it, we was just in the position where we said, do you know what? It's, it's going to be now or never. So just, do yeah. it. you know, take that jump. Yep, that is that is so important. And so what do you find? I'm sure that a lot of times with your clients as well, you experience that they're going through that fear, right? And they're, they're questioning themselves, can I do this? How do you most effectively help them to get through that? Um, well, with fears, I mean, that you know, there can be so, so many fears um, and quite ironic fears with them as well, because some people are, are, are afraid of success. <laughs> When yeah. you think, well, that's what that's what you're seeking is success, is it not? But some people are fear, right. fearful of that because it's something then that they've, they've it's out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Um, and again, comfort zone is a is quite a fearful environment for most people to find themselves in um, or out of, should I say? Um, and basically, I just work one on one with people to see what it is, where they are right now, where they want to go, and what effectively do they think is holding them back. Yep. And mm-hmm. even if they aren't forthcoming in, in admitting straight away what it is that's holding them back, or they might not be aware of it even, you know, until you start having those conversations with them and probing a little bit of information out of them a little bit and, you know, creating that environment that they can trust you and that they can, you know, trust the process and, and be open and honest and transparent with themselves, that's when it exposes more of their fears and then you can work with them to kind of overcome these. Yeah, and it was interesting. I actually came across a situation yesterday. So the uh, lady that I go to, my hairstylist, is branching out into some other entrepreneurial journeys besides just owning her own salon. And she was recently written up in a local magazine about women entrepreneurs and what her vision is. And so she's, you know, her picture and her whole story is in this magazine. And I asked her yesterday, I said, well, how does it feel now that you're kind of out there? And she looked me dead in the face and she paused and she looked like deer in headlights for a minute. And she said, honestly, I really don't like it. She said, I've come to realize now that I've put myself out there and that I'm in this magazine and the world can see it, that I have a great fear of success. And it was so interesting to watch her. Yet we had just spent two hours talking about how excited she is for the journey. But but she's really come to realize that as much as she wants this, there is a fear of success. And it's beautiful, though, right? Because now she can say it and she can recognize it. And that's where we can get past it. The first thing is creating uh, that awareness for it. And really, you know, and it's funny, we, we're going to take a music break here. Craig's going to introduce this next song, but this next song is so appropriate because the title of it is exactly what we are all striving for. <laughs> we break out of corporate and go for this new entrepreneurial journey. That's right. So our next song is by Neo called Champagne Life. Oh, See, I'm just, I told you I could have been on The Voice. I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, you would have won for sure. As a doorman, uh-huh. yeah. as a doorman, I might have got on there. But apart from that, Bob up. How about America's Got Talent, where you know you could actually be singing with your leotard? Well, uh. well, yeah, <laughs> I could turn around and do. <laughs> I was just pictured something then, and I thought, God, I can't say that live on air. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you'll see anyway, me. Anyway, you'll see me. To the show. Put it anyway, this way: you'll see me free. We've, we've got Helen Williams <laughs> okay, from the UK uh, with helping entrepreneurs win, and I know that she had recently just came out with a book. Uh, and can you tell us about uh, your uh, your ebook? Of course, yeah. Um, the digital book then that I um, have recently launched is called The Money Equation. 
And really, as I said about the business and where that was born from, it's the same within the book. So it's really to reach out to people and let them understand that I'm, I, I understand where they're coming from with their potential obstacles and sticking points on their entrepreneurial journey. Um, and we all want to know, and we all aspire to know the secret to making more money, being healthy, love what it is that we actually do, and still be able to spend time with people that we love. And for me, it's all about correct application of a system and a process that we that you know that we need to consider to right. create the balance then of this equation then that I'm talking about. And because it's it's based on all of my own experience and findings, you know, from when I was in the corporate world and transitioned them into being my own boss, as we've just mentioned, I wanted people to read it and think that really resonates with me. You know, mm-hmm. and yep. I've put lots of value then in there where they can they can pick that out and start applying it into their lives and businesses, you know, straight away, just from reading the book. Oh, that's Absolutely. awesome. I can't wait to read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where, can, where can we find that right now? Is it, is um, it out you, now? It's out now, yeah. Um, you can down um, download that direct from my website, which is www helpingentrepreneurswin.com great and and for all the listeners out there as well we will uh put the link to helen's site on our facebook page at craig and jenny d when the show is over with the recording of the show so everything will be on there as well so they can access it if they're interested in getting a copy of that that's awesome Mm -hmm. fabulous that's great stuff if you Mm -hmm. can it's a complimentary download as well so um it's you know it's available for everyone Oh, that is that is so awesome. Well, you are doing so much out there, which is just amazing. And one of the things that we always like to share with our listeners, because they hear, we bring a lot of entrepreneurs onto the show and they hear all the things that we are doing. And a lot of times I think they are wondering, well, how do we really get it all done in a day? And I know one (laughs) of the things also with you is that you just ran a half marathon. And I I was just loving following your journey on this because it was your first half marathon. Is that correct? Uh it was yes probably yeah. my last as well <laughs> <laughs> well you looked amazing doing it let's put it that way you didn't look like you were struggling at all and uh, i know it's challenging craig and i actually do a half marathon each year because it keeps us uh it keeps us driven and it's that goal we have each september that we know look we've got to keep ourselves in that shape and, and we we stay in shape generally throughout the year because it's part of our business and it's something we love and we know it maximizes our energy every day but it's something that just pushes us a little out of our element and gives us a challenge each year and i know one of the things that i heard you saying as you were on the journey preparing for it was how important setting this goal was for you because it not only changed you from a fitness standpoint but having this goal and having to work towards it and push through the challenge was beneficial to you in business. Talk to our listeners a little bit about that because I think that's so important of how these goals in other areas of our life actually influence our ability to be successful in business. Yeah, it is so, so true. And everything that I do either benefits my health and fitness or it benefits my business. Yeah. Um, And if it doesn't, then I don't tend to do it as general room rule of thumb um so yeah set out at new year um um with a nine week lead time to get prepared for this half marathon um never run an event before not even a park fun run you know a 5k or anything um so i, I thought I'd, I'd go in a little bit big but uh, that's that's me and my goals um but yeah, the reason behind it, yeah, as you said, Jenny, was it wasn't just fitness. It was for my business um, because with it, I needed to go out running and training and preparing my mindset for getting over this finish line in cold winds, snow, ice, hail, mm-hmm. rain, dark early mornings. That's a normal yeah, day. saw some of those pictures. That's a- yeah. <laughs> That's a normal day, isn't it, Ellen? UK well, aren't I? No, oh, you're yeah. down, down to a T there. That's 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 uh, one of the holiday resorts you just mentioned in there. <laughs> Manchester, I've just mentioned there. <laughs> it's always great, Manchester. Yeah, I know. Um, but no, um, 
you know that that really it strengthened my it strengthened me it strengthened my resilience it strengthened my focus my determination and then I apply all of that from my on the running track and in the gym and through my training straight into my business because the more resilient I am the more resilient I am in business I never give up I am always looking to do better I'm always striving to do better love it yeah and by doing that I know that I can achieve that. I've just expanded my mindset over something that nine, ten weeks ago I didn't even think I could achieve. Now I know yeah. I can achieve it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is wonderful. It really is, and it's like, and you, and you did it for a cause. Am I correct? Also, I did. Yes, which has been absolutely incredible on the amount of support that I've received for that. My um, my chosen charity was Prostate Cancer UK, and I. I ended up with a whopping total of £1,800, which wow. was, you know, fascinating. Yeah. I had I had an initial target of £500. So to end up with £1,800 is just, oh, it's just oh. unheard of, you know? It's, it's amazing. I'm so grateful for everyone's support. Yeah. I mean, this is tribute to, to you and, and what you do and your energy and what you bring to people because I will tell you that, I mean, that is, that really is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, I think, do a lot of things for charities, which is phenomenal. Uh, but your energy and what you have brought to the table and, I mean, all the stuff that we've talked to you about and the, what you've been posting on Facebook, uh, that is what I've been seeing just drives people because of who you are. So, you know, you're doing an awesome, awesome job. Yeah, and, you know, it was so cool for me to watch, too, because we kind of, uh, you know, you're making me think here that we need to have a bigger challenge than the half marathon we run in September because we always have perfect weather for it. It's like 70 degrees (laughs) and the sun's shining. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, when I watched you out there the day of your race and I was watching all the pictures and I'm like, man, it looks really cold and wet and nasty. And (laughs) I've got a good one for you. It nearly got cold off. It nearly got cold off. Like the UK was covered in snow um, that week. And, you know, it came to chaos. You know, there was problems with all of the airports, the rail links, you know, a, you know, a wow. white covering in the UK, and we all panic. But granted, you know, further north and what have you, yes, you know, it was, de- you know, there was deep snow. Down in the south, fingers crossed, not just 24 hours before the race was due to start, it had all cleared. It was just magic. And then we had sunshine on that morning. It was as though that somebody was shining down to say this race has to go ahead. Where was it? Where was the race? <laughs> it was in London. Was it? Right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, this is the beauty of surrounding yourself with people that you want to become, right? Because we, we, we keep challenging each other to take it to a new level, and that's what's so cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm intrigued to see what your next challenge is, then, Craig and Jenny D. <laughs> we're always coming up with one and I've got one for him I've to g- do stuff as well I've so got one for you, you. watch out for some of those though yeah. I've got one for Definitely. you water skiing Go water skiing in Iceland water skiing in Iceland hey. we're there we're, th- we're on it that's the next trip I love I it I want to see so- I want to see someone water ski well, no, out on the in the sea there in the in the uh, Atlantic absolutely freezing cold not able to open their hands once they've got hold of the <laughs> The bar on oh. the rope. <laughs> Are you trying to kill us? <laughs> I got forced into doing it once on a canal in Warrington. My God, <clears throat> never again. Well, it wasn't a canal; it was a river. But pff, it was like I was. It was slalom skiing. I was trying to miss viaducts and all sorts <laughs> on the back of this boat. <laughs> Burn out cars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was. Oh, yeah. There was everything there. Seriously, I thought, what am I on here? It's like something out of, you know, like a, a Disney, one of these film sets where a, like a volcano's gone off and everything's lying about and you have to try and miss it. Well, <laughs> it was like that. And now this speedboat, wow. this speedboat was never straight. It was on its side every five seconds. It kept swerving. I'm thinking, can he go straight? And then, I, then he said to me after he saw, there's a lot of hidden things under the water, and you have, we've got it written on this map here where everything is under the water. So what do you mean hidden? I said, well, if I go down and you break your legs hit it, what happens then? He said, well, pff, accident, and emergency, basically. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Won't be doing that wow. again. Wow. Well, real quick, before we go to our next song break, Helen, give us an idea of what you're, you're, obviously you're doing so many different things. So what does that daily routine look like for you? What's that schedule that you live by each and every day? 
Okay, well, that's that's really, really easy for me to answer. It's basically an early bed and an early rise. That is my secret. <laughs> I love yeah, it. That's good. I do that myself. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, so crucial. You know, by that, I don't mean anything too drastic. I'm not in bed at like 8, 9 p.m. or anything like that. But it's something that's sustainable. And first thing in the morning, I the same as you guys, it's I'm out at the gym or outdoor doing some cardio or now, of course, with the Craig and Jenny D at home, no excuse workout. I do that first thing in the morning and that Love sets it. me up yeah. then that sets me up then for the day ahead. You know, it's 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 easy enough to do. Everyone can do it, but it's a mindset that I've had to then learn to love and learn to adopt into my uh, daily routine. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Now, you know, do you? I, know, you oh, I was gonna say the one thing that you said is that that uh, I love to hear is that uh, that's why we just we connect so well. Is you said sustainable? I yeah. mean, and that is so big because that's what we try to teach everybody out there is to make sure that everything they do is sustainable because they have all these little quick fix gadgets and 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 exercise and nutrition plans but you're finding something that's sustainable and that is amazing yeah Yeah. it it really is so 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 important to be able to uh to do that and and you know make sure you get in all the time and i think that's where doing it first thing in the morning helps Mm -hmm. and a lot of people say well i'm not a morning person i will tell you that craig and i were not morning people either i don't know if you (laughs) always were but we were not until we really started living this lifestyle years ago and we realized the only way to guarantee we get some sort of movement in every day is to get up first thing in the morning and do it because that's you know we're up before the children we have five kids at home for those of you listeners out there that don't know that so our day easily gets interrupted right between the business and five children there can always be an interruption so having it first thing in the morning i know i do you have any tricks i know for me i just leave my workout clothes right on my nightstand so when I yeah. wake up in the morning, I roll over, I look at them, and I'm like, oh, there they are. I'm putting them on, and I'm going. So what is it? I know some people even sleep in their workout clothes. What's your little <laughs> secret to just get up and go, or you just do it? It, it is in the preparation. And, you know, you, you, you go to bed knowing that you're in bed at the right time to have enough sleep, because obviously sleep is as important as the activity and the, you know, the putting the energetic action in. You know, you need yeah. your rest period. Um, but knowing that you that you're doing that, and that's what you that's what your schedule is, and it starts off with getting up, and the alarms on at five thirty, five forty five. As I said, it's nothing too drastic. It's right. something that everyone can do. But no, I didn't always love it. I, yeah. I've had to learn to love it, and le- it's not even learn to love the time. I learn what it brings for me, and I learn. Yeah. I learned what it actually enables me to do and how it enables me to feel in the morning and knowing that yeah. I'm ahead of the game. Like yeah. that's what I said when we, when we logged on here for this, for this um, interview, it was just past 11 a.m. I said morning, but it actually felt like probably into the depths of the afternoon because I've been up since half five. Right, yeah. exactly. And I've got so much done this morning. It's been great. It's so productive. And my energy levels are still right up there and will continue through the day. Well, that is Um, awesome. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking more about that after this next song by In Excess and New Sensation. No idea idea what happened then. Apparently, we just spoke to Orange and apparently some villages in the area have got exactly the same problem. It just went off and she said it's intermittent between now and six (laughs) o'clock. Oh, oh, that's, that's great. Thanks for letting us know. Plunkers. That's interesting. Yeah, we thought you were just tired of us and cut us off. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, if you saw me, I was like a Tasmanian devil running around here. Oh, I In bet. a leotard. Yeah, yeah, with me, with me fruit ball on view. Oh, yeah. oh that's <laughs> funny. Well, he's making an appearance. <laughs> Well, while we while we've got you, David, yeah. uh, we are going to have Helen fil- finish us out here because we want to know from her what are the three valuable tips that you can tell everybody to help them to create a successful day for themselves as we sign off here today. Awesome, yeah. So um, at number one, we touched upon it in, in a, a little bit, Jenny, where you said about you know getting prepared the night before with your your gym kit. So preparation is key the night before. So whether that's your schedule, you know, the timings, if you've got children, get the kids' uniforms out, breakfast pots, supplements, whatever it may be, food prep, gym kit, 
Be prepared before you go to bed. It eliminates any fuss then in the morning. Sounds like being in the army. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like... It sounds like being in the army, this. (laughs) We need to be regimented. I know. We're serious. I know. know? know. It's true. I I know. Well, I actually... I do all this without realising I'm doing it. That's the funny thing. When you're you're saying it like this, it's how I'm thinking, well, (laughs) I've actually done most of this. For you then, David. I know. Don't I don't want to brag, you but get, you know. You get gold star. Um, so yeah, at, at number two, at number two, I would say um, work on yourself first. Um, so obviously, you both ho- wholeheartedly um, adopt this as well. But exercising, working on yourself, your your own mind, your own body, and that focus before you do anything else. So that's before any of the email check-ins come in, before yeah. any phone call, any social media. If you've got children, do that before the children come in and uh, wake up and cause chaos. You know, oh, yeah. you must yeah. have you must have yourself and working on yourself as a priority. Um, yeah. And then lastly, and then lastly, I would say at number three is just be grateful. You know, for everything, so every single day, just be grateful. Even the struggles that you may be facing on on a particular period of of, of your life, you know, be grateful for these because. They make you into the person you are today and the person that you need to become moving forward. And yes. we all learn from challenge and adversity. So be grateful for that being thrown at you and rise from it, you know. Be grateful for every single day being a new opportunity for bettering yourself and bettering your situation and start to enjoy the day and the journey and just embrace that. That's the thing. We really have to enjoy that journey because, you know, we keep saying, well, we'll be happy when we get here or when we get there. But as soon as we get there, we're going to have another goal. That's just how the human mind works. Right. And so otherwise we end up always saying we'll be happy when and before we know it, we're 75 years old and we're still not happy. And we're going, gosh, where did my life go? And I didn't enjoy any of it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And so that's really, you know, when we talk about our daily schedules, you know, ours looks very similar to yours. And and we've been talking kind of about this all morning. But the first thing we do is, you know, we get up and we throw those exercise clothes on and we get some sort of movement in. And while I'm doing my movement, I actually listen to uh, meditations and affirmations and uh, play those over, over and over my head. So I'm doing my mindset work while I'm moving. Yeah. And uh, then after that, you know, we uh, we always eat the same exact breakfast. We have a vegan protein shake every morning. Uh, never changes. We just change the flavor. That's what it is, exactly. <laughs> but, but right, it's a routine. So that's how we yeah. know it's always going to be what it needs to be. And then yeah. after that, we get the kids up and we get them ready for school. And, and then once they go off to school, we go about our day with our business. But yeah. um, it's so important to have a consistent schedule because consistency is just key to us keeping keeping track of everything mm-hmm. yeah yeah so uh, i know that we uh have to close out now but we, we do, are yeah. we are so excited that we had you on here today helen yes. uh for everybody out there this was helen williams from helping entrepreneurs win mm. you can check us out on the craig and jenny d facebook page like us there we will put helen's information there so that you can reach out to her the Facebook page, like us there. We will put Helen's information there so that you can reach out to her as well and follow along with what she's doing as well as get uh, the copy of her latest digital book, uh, which is called The Money Equation. So we are going to go on to our last song right now, which is uh, Demi Lovato. And wow, I have no idea what that says. Yeah, Yeah. I'm like, like, I can't even read that, David, but it's Demi Lovato. (laughs) <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great week. Helen, have a great one. Thank you. We'll see Thank you on next week. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, guys. Have a, great, have a great day. Brilliant. Take care. Speak to you next week. Thank you.